so those little dots right in there that's what we're looking at hey guys uh, I just spent a whole lot of the day working on this engine a little bit trying to figure out the end play the guy said that you know it was all clearance and ready to go which it looked like it was I mean it's, it's been clearanced up here for the crank um, you know right there you can see um, but you know it wasn't clearanced enough here so I had to do some of my own clearance work this was the factory clearance work it looks nice um, and up here it was enough but unfortunately in the center it was not so I had to clearance that myself um, it, it's not as pretty as the factory one but so the next steps here I think are going to be a plug oil pump the tap and plug it and uh, do the same here on the case and uh, once we tap the case and tap that tap. that'll be ready for full flow uh, this is a 32 millimeter pump so some extra extra flow there uh, the 32 millimeters from what I understand is the depth so the deeper it is, the more oil you flow. Uh, what we've just done is uh, tapped uh, with NPT threads the uh, outgoing port on this oil pump and plugged it. And then we've also plugged the case. This one's actually one quarter inch as opposed to the other one being three eighths. Uh, that is so when we put this together, instead of pumping directly into the block, it's going to go out of the block through this. So we're going full flow, external oil, and we'll run an oil filter and an oil cooler. And it comes back into the block right here, through this machined hole. Normally, it would be like a boss there with like a little pin that usually seals that off. So what we got here, you guys, is an engine stand adapter ring with engine control module. The really cool thing about this is that we can actually start the engine on the stand with control conditions. You're not using the factory wiring harness. You're using a nice, pristine control box. Let's take a look at that. So there is our diagram of the adapter ring, and it shows you have the fitment of a plate for the starter, for your factory starter. So you don't have to go find some weird new car starter that you don't know the part number to. It's your Volkswagen factory starter. And they give you a very nice manual here, or not a manual, but a diagram here to show you how to wire everything to your engine and how to get it set up so that you can start this baby. This looks to be our control box itself. It's a really nice looking unit. I mean. I don't know what to say, but it's very clean. I like the look of it. It's not cheap looking. It's has an oil sensor light, ignition. Ignition on and off. Mm, generator light. Wow. Very good. Wow. And it looks like everything's labeled too. Oh so wow. So you've got your oil, your ignition, your battery, generator, alternator, uh, choke solenoid maybe. Wow. So well, shit out of luck. Some kind of hardware, other hardware. I'm sure mounting hardware and brackets. 
Those are some nice brackets. Really good, like, machine work. Yeah, this stuff. looks like pretty good quality. I like this. Like, really good quality. That's something to look at. So, I'm not a weld expert. I don't know what kind of weld process this was. I would assume either MIG or TIG. Um, but the beads do look really good. I like that they're all cut to fit each other like that before they're welded. That makes for some really good rigidity and strength. I really like they, they push this bushing for the starter shaft go and line up with and actually to support the starter shaft that's necessary um, really really smart that they thought about that um, it looks like it's gonna be a really strong and sturdy and really awesome design I'm super excited <laughs> time to hit Harbor Freight for a stand and if the stands not good enough we'll uh, modify it and make it better Woo! oh and real quick if you liked any of the product we showed today, we're going to leave a link in the pinned comment down below to zalixindustries.com because they obviously have some really cool stuff. Let's go ahead and uh, put some, start putting some assembly lube on this engine. Um, we're going to put it anywhere that the bearings are going to sit um, for the crank and the cam. Also, we need to uh, get a lot of lubrication in these lifter ports as well. Quite a good amount. Those little dots right in there, that's what we're looking at, those three dots. The one for the cam is lined up between the two for the crank. So now I'm going to go ahead and get this second case half ready, um, get everything lubricated, the lifters placed in there, find a way to lock them in place so when I set it together they don't fall out, and get my bearings placed and lubricated, and I'll see you at that point. <laughs> what's happening so when we're hitting that hard spot when it doesn't when it wants to stop spinning it's hitting right there well look at that we're hitting our cam on our crank our cam lobe is hitting our crank at Damn. the bottom of its cycle so we need to clearance that crank just a tiny bit I don't know if that's going to throw off how bad it's going to throw off balance if we clearance it enough to do this. I don't know. I'll have to ask a buddy of mine a couple questions. But, uh, I mean, no damage so far, but, you know, if you ran an engine like that, I'm sure it would be damaged. What we've done is we've taken all the spots where it was hitting or very close to hitting uh, between the cam and the crank. We've marked it with black Sharpie and, uh, I'll decide what to do with those probably tomorrow, uh, whether I'm just going to try and do it myself, do a little hand clearancing, or uh, if I'm going to take it somewhere to try and professionally do it. I'm kind of leaning towards the second option. I'm going to ask a couple buddies some questions and uh, get their input and we'll go from there. Dusty Crew, our 2180cc engine build. We got the test fitting done. We clearance the crank. In the next video, get the motor actually together. And then hopefully, <laughs> we can get it started. I want to give another big shout out to Zalix Industries for letting us use their adapter ring and control box module. We are so grateful for that. If you saw in the beginning, we were struggling a lot just using the bench as our engine stand. So. 
We are really happy that we have an engine stand with an adapter and that control box is going to be super cool when we get to fire it up. I'm so excited. Keep watching for the next Baja Bug Club video and the rest of this conclusion to our motor build. I'm so excited. Stay dusty. By the way, Dusty Crew, you guys can pick up a t-shirt just like this one with your own classic car on it. I'll leave a link in the description below. It was only 25 bucks, so I'm pretty stoked with it. It came out beautifully.